Hello, my name is Lupiana Muiche. I have more than 10 years in cybersecurity in Dovers, covering different areas of cybersecurity tour. In this channel, I'll be talking about different techniques, practice, controls, and issues of cybersecurity with emphasis on action-oriented data, action-oriented information, things that I deliver that you can immediately use and apply in a given organization or given environment. So in this series, I'll be talking about security controls. And of course, when we talk about security controls, we are talking about the security in general, because these are the kind of mechanism, the kind of procedures, the kind of tools, the kind of configuration that we put in place to ensure that we are secure from different cyber attacks. So this is the focus of this series. And I warmly welcome you guys so that you can participate and get something from it for your immediate application. So I think that is now for introduction. Let's go deeper into the content of this series. So before we go into talk more about these security controls, we have to understand that security is treated different by different peoples. And here I'm talking about the perception of people. Their majority perception when you talk about security, if you ask somebody or even yourself when you heard about cybersecurity, what you comes into your mind. For most of people, what comes in their mind when they heard of cybersecurity are things of ethical hacking, penetration testing, Kali Linux, Palot, and OS, and those kind of issues, which is right because those are the kind of very common or very famous control, security controls that almost anybody who has come across these cybersecurity things must be exposed to them in one way or another. But though they are crucial controls for cybersecurity, I want you to understand they present just a tip of an iceberg. And that's the essence of this channel, that we have to cover security in a holistic view, especially for us or for you being a student or a practitioner, the experienced one, the beginner or the intermediate, but you are responsible or you are supposed to be responsible or you are freelancing for securing organizations, infrastructure, cyber infrastructure and whatever. We have to get a clear and a big picture of what security is all about. So as I say, though this common concept that we come across, they are crucial in cybersecurity, but they are not the holistic view of it. They are just presenting a tip of an iceberg. So security in the heuristic is a holistic thing. You have to incorporate controls and standards from different areas for you to have a sensible defense against versatile and contemporary cyber attacks. Now, the emphasis here, we are not going after the popularity of controls. And these are the kind of myth that I've come across through my years of ex experience in this area that you may find people doing this and not doing that just because what they do is what other people are doing, which is right because you rain it from other people's experience. But in the field of security, we have to go deeper than that, that the popularity of the controls or the standard, like the things we've come across, just I've just mentioned, is not the true and the holistic indicator of what cybersecurity is all about. We have to focus on the relevance of the controls and the standard that we are to put in our given environment, in our given infrastructure, so has to have that level of confidence that we are secured. And of course, when I talk about the level of confidence, you will know, or you have already known that when you talk about cybersecurity, there is no system that is 100% secure. The system is just secure to the eye of the beholder. So the point here is to make sure that when you have your own confidence that I have secured my environment, you have based that confidence from the holistic view of this cyber security controls and not just picking one or two issues that have been prevailing over the internet and think that you have done it all. So that's the essence and that's the focus of this channel talking and presentations. And here also we have to understand that doing the right thing in security may not always be doing the most famous thing. And I think when I'm talking about that, we are getting in the same page as we keep on discussing more about these issues. So as I said, security is a holistic thing. We have different fields of IT or different fields of technology. We have programming, we have server administrators, we have network administrators, and they have their own demarcation. But when we come to security, 
to my own experience is something that is so holistic that you cannot have that levels of confidence that I've did it all and nobody can be able to tamper with me. So here we'll be talking about some critical security controls. And the focus of this channel of this presentation will be talking more about Center for Internet Security Critical Security Control. Those are the kind of things that we'll be focusing on in these presentations. Now, we said before that there are different standards, there are different controls, and we have seen the common one like ethical, hacking, penetration things, the Kali Linux, the Parrot OS. Now, why bother in focusing on this standard? There are also different standards as we keep on going on. We may come across them, and all those different standards are, standards are meant for different niche. They may be for finance, they may be for health. But why bother in with these CIS critical security controls? Based on my experience and based on what has brought this kind of standard into reality is that this kind of controls that formed by this open source organization, they are also open source standard. But the good thing about it, they are reflecting expert from every part of the ecosystem. They are not just owned by a group of people sitting somewhere having their own agenda. No, this kind of standard, they have been contributed and they are open contributed by different experts from every part of the ecosystem, talking about companies, government, individual, they all contribute to make sure the realization of this standard really reflect what is to be done to secure one infrastructure. And not only has contributors from every part of the ecosystem, but also it has considered different laws from those kind of ecosystem. We're talking about the analysts, the threat analysts, the threat responders, the vulnerability finders, the tool makers, the academician, the all those people that they are involved in cybersecurity in one area or another, they have put their input in this kind of a standard. And of course, this standard also incorporates stakeholders across many sectors. They are not dedicated like just for finance or for health or for government. All those sectors have people contributed to this kind of standard. So they make them a kind of universal standard in their realization. And all these people have come together to create, to adapt and support this CIS control. So on my experience and based on the fact behind this kind of security controls, they form a really strong basis for someone who wants to secure the organization. They form a very strong load map or a very strong baseline. And of course, they are baseline. All standards are baseline. That one you should understand from the beginning. All standards are baseline. So based on the facts and the experience of implementing these controls, they form a very strong, a very sound baseline for any organization, any individual who is working in cybersecurity sphere to make sure that one has a good framework to implement, analyze, and evaluate the given controls based on contemporary cyber trends. And moreover, these CIS critical security controls, they have been designed based on a certain principle that if you look at those principles, they are convincing that, yeah, these are the things that I should adapt and incorporate in my given endeavors. One of the principles or among them is they have used this so-called offense informed defense. It simply means they didn't just blow this standard and controls just because they have led it somewhere or they are famous or they are most prevailing ones when one Googles or YouTubing them. No, they have used the data to inform what control should be there, what control should be selected, how should it be implemented based on breach data, based on attacker behavior. And of course, these controls are also changing as this data also are changing. That means there are different variations, there are different versions of this standard as things are changing, so as the standard. So at any point of time, anyone using or realizing this control in his given environment, he or she is going hand in hand with the actual situation out there in this contemporary cyber sphere. And of course, these controls have been focusing on avoiding the temptation that most of cybersecurity professionals have, the temptation of solving everything. 
like I've heard that there is this control, then I have to put this mitigation. I've heard that there is this loophole, then I have to this put mitigation. The focus of this control is has been identifying the most critical things to be done to stop the most important attacks. As I said, holistic, I mean, as I as I've talked before, that the issue of cybersecurity is something that is very holistic. So the guys, the expert here have been focusing, has been putting all their expertise and their effort to analyze from the data of the breaches and attack behavior and different input from their experience, of course, based on how they have been breached and how they have been recovering from those attacks to form a pattern of what are the most important attacks important by the sense that they are the most prevailing and by also by the sense that they are when they happen the impact is that tremendous so the focus here is to identify those critical things that can be in place to ensure that anyone using this kind of status and kind of control is secured from the most important attacks on the other end, also, this standard are feasible by the sense that realizing them does not necessarily want you to spend um, so much on commercial tools. Of course, the commercial tools are there, but you have an option based on your level of maturity in your organization and your budget. You can implement them based on free tools. You can implement them based on commercial tools. And you, of course, even implementing them is also easy, is also affordable because they are ecosystem of people who are using them. So it's easy for you to get help as the standard is also open source. And of course, the control are measurable. I think that is straightforward. It's easy for you to measure how are you performing as we are going to see throughout this series of security controls. And on the other end, these controls, they are not existing on their own. We know there are so many controls out there. There are so many standards out there. So this control, the way they have been formed, they have not been formed as the, the rule of thumb, the one and the only one standard. They have also considered other standards out there and they have been making sure that also this standard in one way or another coexist with those other governance standard. And of course, as we are going to see further in this series, also you can map the control in this standard direct to other standard, like the most common standard in web application or as and this all other standard. And one of the things that I like the most about this control is their applicability based on your organization maturity and security. They have made it so easy that so that when you are deciding to use them, you do not necessarily need to do each and everything. You first have to decide on your level of maturity as far as cybersecurity is concerned. And of course, they have divided them into three levels called implementation group. Implementation group one, group two, group three. And the difference between them is the first group is concerned about those people who do not have dedicated cybersecurity professional at all. The second one, they have an employed cybersecurity professional in place. And of course, they have regulatories mandate that they have to be adhered with, but the level of their maturity is not as high as that of implementation group three, because in implementation group three, also they're not just having professional for cybersecurity in place, but they have this complex cybersecurity requirement, like have their dedicated department and people for application security, for network security, for risk assessment, and all those kind of dimensions. So this is the top level. So as any individual organization that's want to realize this control, one will decide based on level of his or her maturity in cybersecurity in a given organization. So in this series, what will be the scope of coverage as far as the security controls, specifically this Center for Internet Security, critical security controls are? We'll be covering all CIS critical security control version 8, which is the latest standard actually released. And of course, in each security control, our focus will be understanding why do we need that of course first what is that control and why do we need that control but first and foremost is the procedures and tools that we have to use to realize because this is the 
most centered objective of this channel. Like not just to talk about the stories of cybersecurity, but to make sure that anyone can incorporate these kind of measures and techniques so that cybersecurity does not become just like a dream or just like a concept, but it's become that a reality that anyone can implement. So here we will be talking about the tools and the procedures and the focus also. We know that there are so many tools out there, the open source one, the commercial one. And for someone who is new to this field, to this area, it is very difficult, of course, to thoroughly test each and every tool. So based on my experience and, of course, experience of other people I've met in the field, so I'll be using the tool that I've already built or tested them. And I've seen that, yeah, this tool does the work that they're supposed to do. So we'll also be talking about the tools and the procedure for each control and of course the safeguards whenever you implement that given control so in a nutshell this is what we are going to cover in this series and of course as we keep on talking and training and discussing we may add or we may reduce things but actually this is the scope and actually these are the actual 18 cis critical security controls so you can just see the very most common controls that we all know is like ethical hacking, penetration testing, carrying out Linux and all that stuff. They are only the top, I mean, the last three ones, the application security, the incident response management, and the penetration testing. And these three are the most prevailing ones. But you can see there are also another 15 controls that they are not that common, but they form a very 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 necessary and significant law in ensuring that you have secured your development so that is it for the introduction of this series and keep coming on this channel and don't forget to subscribe so that you always get to understand what is happening in this channel as i said the emphasis is action oriented information and of course if you have any concern about the cyber security issues also feel free to consult us feel free to chat with us through whatsapp anyone can ask us anything because the idea here is to make sure that the knowledge delivered in this channel is applicable and people actually use it not just to speak it by the objective of speaking no just to make sure the things that we deliver they really meet what people need to solve their daily security issues so that's it for today see you next time have a nice day